Welcome to the Blind Mole. Today we are chatting, uh, spitballing, whatever you want to call it, about the future of music in movies, which is an exciting topic, I think, for most of us. Um, we really like talking about the past. Uh, <laughs> so this is odd for us to go into the future. Yeah, it's uh, the up and comers. So like, uh, who's going to be the greats, the next greats, right? But, but before before we jump into that, Clint, I want to ask you, in sports, we always talk about the greatest of all time, right? The GOAT. We talk right. about the Mount Rushmore, you know, Tom Brady, Michael Jordan. Who would you say in movie music belongs on Mount Rushmore? I'd probably go with Williams, obviously. Okay, so, so John Williams, the godfather, okay. Horner. Ooh, James Horner, that spicy. <laughs> Uh, debatable <laughs> debatable really well yeah it's debatable and jerry goldsmith is in there yeah he'd uh, be on mine zimmer? possibly zimmer yeah i was just gonna say that um and the influence he's had in movies and the up-and-comers now zimmer's polarizing i've noticed a lot of people on that watch our videos have said negative things about him and I was curious where that was coming from. Like, like, what is it about Hans Zimmer that people don't like? Like John Williams, can you imagine someone saying something bad about him? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Even someone like Thomas Newman, he's just great, you know? I wouldn't have Newman on there, personally. I might have Michael Giacchino on my Rushmore, honestly. But that's just that's maybe a, a personal bias, because he's, he's probably my favorite composer. Well, he's pretty much closer to being one of the up and comers. I mean, he's established himself now, but he's rather new. That's true. Together. W would you say Giacchino is the heir apparent to John Williams just because of the movies he has kind of stepped into? Right. Like on Rogue One. Yeah. Rogue One, Jurassic, Jurassic World. Yeah. I, I, I think he's on the producer's shortlist that, oh, John Williams can't do it. Who are they going to call? You know? Zimmer, Zimmer's style is so different from Williams. I don't think they consider him that replacement. You know, Giacchino has that same kind of style. And I think that's, that's an interesting point. We look at Goldsmith, Williams, um, uh, John Barry, some of these older composers, mm -hmm. they were all about their themes, right? And we had this really thematic phase in music. And now you look at Zimmer, you look at some of these new composers and you think, where what is their style it kind of varies from movie to movie doesn't it yeah the style of the movies and today you know uh things are changing people really want unique styles in every single movie which we talked about at length in the marvel podcast 20 years ago would you have, would you have asked ludwig gorenson to compose the black panther Who's would he? You, <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> but Oscar winner. <laughs> yeah. And that was, it was fantastic. It was great. New, new. And, and that's, that's a huge, huge talking point too. When we talk about the future of movie music is the computer changing everything. You don't have to go to Juilliard anymore. You don't have to be classically trained. You can study this on your own, on YouTube. You can compose music on Ableton or pro tools from your basement, which is kind of how junkie XL got started. So it, it, it's, an, it's an exciting time, and, and we want to just take a look now at uh, five composers we think everyone should pay attention to. These are the guys we think are going to step into those day plot. James Newton Howard, mm. Hans Zimmer, Michael G. The, the names we're hearing now, you're going to hear these names just as much in 10 years. So these may be the uh, composers um, our kids will be talking about, like how we talked about Williams and Zimmer on that day. So uh, the first composer um, we want to talk about is Nicholas Breitel. Um, and his, uh, I guess we were going through and wondering uh, what each composer's weapon of choice was. And he really sticks to the piano, that classical influence. Um, his inspirations would, of course, be like Rachmaninoff, Philip Glass, Gershwin. And so you really hear that in his um his um, composing style. And he was, he was nominated again this year for Beale Street, which if you listen to it, very similar to Moonlight. Yeah. Oh. And he also uh, scored Vice the same year. Same year, which is really cool. Even though that wasn't nominated, but it was. Yeah. 
Another fun thing I heard, I, I learned about him was that in 12 Years a Slave, he didn't compose the score because the score was a basically one track <laughs> by Hans Zimmer because Steve McQueen did not want the music to interfere with the movie, which is why most of the movie is quiet. Mm -hmm. There's one track in there called uh, Washington, I think, which is gorgeous. And if you listen to it, you're like, wow, I wish Zimmer had written more for this movie and you realize why he didn't. But the actual music that's played in the movie, like by people in houses and stuff, was written by Brytel. So let's just look at one track by um, Brytel. And Clint, why don't you kind of tell us stylistically what you hear in this in, in the track um, uh, Lavender Oil from um, Battle of the Sexes, which is probably my favorite track he's written. The music sounds very ethereal, inviting. And I was thinking it was like sitting on grandma's porch. There's a light breeze making the wind chime sound. It sounds like wind chime. So I, I don't know what the visual scene is, but, um, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure how it's the music's produced, something with computers, I'm sure, and other traditional instruments and sounds. Um, but it's really, really pretty. So, Another composer that we were talking about was uh, Daniel Pemberton. His weapon of choice would be the strings, we were thinking. And in 2016, he was named Film Composer of the Year. And uh, I was looking at what films were in 2016. And I know uh, Steve Jobs was one of those, the Fassbender version. <laughs> Which he composed. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, this guy, he's a little bit older, so he's not like a new, you know, this guy's been around, but it feels like he's finally starting to get his due. He's composed King Arthur, uh, Legend of the Sword, which is so underrated both as a movie and as a score. It's awesome. From, from track one to track whatever. A lot of emotion in it, a lot of energy, a lot of passion. It's on my watch list. I have yet to see it, <laughs> but I love the tracks. It's it's fun, uh, high energy, something that you could work out to uh, that idea. And uh, one of his most recent Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which got a lot of attention. So great. Let's look now at Pemberton style, Clint. I, I, a track I'd love for you to analyze a little bit here is from Ocean's 8. He did the score for Ocean's 8, and, and Ocean's 8 is an interesting one. It's kind of like Jurassic World or Rogue One, where Pemberton couldn't just create his own thing completely. This is part of a franchise, and that style from Ocean's 11 had to be mimicked in some sense. But the track I'm looking at is NYC Larceny. It really gives the idea of some kind of mon montage or um, a heist scene uh, where it's just constantly moving. It has a cool vibe with that acoustic guitar and really uh, full-fledged big band style, yet with his own style put in there as well. It's cool because a lot of those different weird sounds we hear on the tracks are made in very easy ways really on just one stringed intimate uh, and yeah. you can go on to youtube and see all these different uh, instruction videos on how to make those different sounds it's very simple just turn the bow around on the violin or something <laughs> like that yeah so, it's really cool so the third guy on our list uh, the third composer i should say is justin herwitz born in 1985 he's a young young buck a lot of you are already familiar with him. He composed the music for the films of Damien Chazelle, which includes Whiplash, La La Land, and First Man. Three incredible scores right there that you could start with. La La Land, obviously, score and soundtrack. So he composed the lyrics and the work and the, the music to the that amazing, amazing movie. And then First Man, which I think was the biggest snub in the Oscars this year. Yeah, that should have been at least nominated. Absolutely. But what do I know? So so he's only composed four movies, which is crazy. And those are three of them. <laughs> that's called that's called never shooting a blank. <laughs> right. And he already has those two Oscars. That's insane. So so the weapon of choice, I would say Hurwitz uses is the waltz. 
which is interesting. It's just uh, stylistically, he uses waltzes all over in his music. You hear it in La La Land. And, and the track I would love you to look at here, Clint, is from First Man. That's called Quarantine. And it's the, the, it's the theme that kind of runs through most of the score. You'll hear this in a lot of tracks. But what do you hear in his waltz, uh, especially the space opera? You hear that harp, which kind of gives the idea of delicacy. Um, so obviously the situation, someone in space is a very delicate situation. Uh, so that translates real well. And have you ever heard of a theremin? No. Uh, no? So uh, I guess back in the day, it was a very experimental type of instrument. And it's... Um, uh, kind of a machine that gives two high frequency oscillators with the pitch controlled by movement of the performer's hand. So you just kind of place your hand into it and it's an open space, basically huh. open space where you control the pitch by raising your hand up or to left and right. That's used a lot in sci-fi style uh, movies or about space because that has that sci-fi feel. So it's kind of an interesting mm. fact. <laughs> yeah, you do hear that throughout his score. Oh, it's just so fantastic. I don't know how it wasn't nominated. So our next composer would be Lorne Balfe, I believe it's pronounced. Balfe. He's a Scottish composer, and he really has that uh, Zimmer-esque energy and power. Um, so um he was that uh, one of the students of zimmer at remote control productions a lot of his movies have that style of zimmer so we got lego batman movie mega mind the crown uh, pacific rim and one of our favorites mission impossible fallout if you haven't done the challenge make sure you do it and if you don't know what we're talking about go to our youtube channel and you'll see the mission impossible fallout challenge it's, Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. That stairs and rooftops track is really, really good. Easily my favorite track. Although someone pointed out to me in Fallout, the exchange is also a fantastic track. It's where they, they're figuring out how to exchange the prisoner. Balf is on our list to me because he's finally getting his due. He's a little bit older than these young bucks, mm. but he is killing it. Just recently, and uh, kind of stepping out of Zimmer's shadow and creating his own sound, which is hard to do, I think, because Zimmer has done so much. And I'm sure the the principles and the techniques he learned um, are basically all Zimmer's. Mm. So now he gets a chance to create his own thing. And, you know, what he did with Mission Impossible, to me, that's the best Mission Impossible score yet. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And maybe the best Mission Impossible film overall as well. I don't think maybe. <laughs> I think you put it definitely on there. Okay. <laughs> so let's just look at one of his tracks, Clint. Let's talk a little bit about his style. In the Lego Batman movie, which is a score probably not a lot of people listen to, there's a track called No Seat Belts Required. And it's like this cool homage to the old Batman theme mm. with this new... Valve-esque energy attached to it. What do you hear in that? Uh, right. Well, you just mentioned nods to Danny Elfman's Batman, um, the classic TV Batman, and of course Zimmer style. Because um, so it has that repetitive percussive strings and rock beat. It's very playful. Um, it's a lot of fun to listen to, really. Yeah, high energy, high octane. And I think you'll hear that more. These these composers that are composing films in a franchise paying homage to this old, awesome uh, theme that everyone's familiar with. And then they're going to get paid homage to by composers in the future, which is really cool to think about. We're going to have these new themes and new styles. Hopefully themes won't die. Please don't die, themes. Is it? Is it homage or homage? Depends on if you're French. <laughs> this brings us to our last and maybe best up and coming composer. He's not really up and coming because he's already here, but I think in 10 years, he's still going to be dominating. And that is 
Tom Holkenberg, which everyone knows as Junkie XL. And this guy just burst onto the scene, man. Like he came out of nowhere. Like I remember the first time I heard his name and I was like, who is that? And I saw him attached to some, he started doing projects with Hans Zimmer. And he's the man behind the Wonder Woman theme in Batman versus Superman. He wrote that, which yeah, everyone thinks uh, that. it's maybe the best superhero theme ever. You know, he also composed Mad Max, which is maybe the best action uh, score I've ever heard. I mean, it's just adrenaline from start to finish. And obviously that is up for debate, but I would say his weapon of choice is the computer because as we were talking about, like he's one of these self-made composers who uh, grew up being a DJ uh, started putting together tracks on Ableton or Cubase or whatever program he was using Mm. and just realized he had a gift for this. And I think with the style of music and the style of scores changing, he probably I don't know. I can't speak for him, but he probably was able to see that and be able to put his influence in it to it as well. And we mentioned that he wrote uh, the Mad Max soundtrack. If you listen to the track, either Brothers in Arms or A Storm is Coming, which I think are the two best tracks on that score. Clint, when you listen to, to that score, what do you hear? Well, definitely that Zimmer influence. Um, it's very percussive, per usual, you know, a constant beat that makes us have that sense of constant motion and movement. And that uh, rock influence with the drums and electric guitar. Um, I'm not sure if it's all a uh, computer or if he, I'm sure he uses both orchestra and synthesizer. Not entirely sure, but um, it, it has those fun distortions and sound effects that are used with uh, musical instruments and percussion. So it would be fun to know exactly how everything's uh, every sound is made, but uh, mostly strings, synthesizer, per- percussion. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking I was thinking this is barely to me. It's like they're passing the torch. The greatest like chase actions track of all time to me was the asteroid field by John Williams. Mm. And then it, and then maybe the torch was passed to Zimmer's uh, work in Inception in Mombasa. And then maybe the torch got passed to Brothers in Arms by Junk XL. And then maybe Stairs and Rooftops by <laughs> Lauren Balfe has taken the torch. <laughs> you could just listen to those four tracks every time you go running and you'd probably run more than you'll ever run. <laughs> pass out (laughs) you probably disagree with me on passing over the asteroid field but maybe i I mean it's awesome right but i I remember listening to that track um just with my brothers growing up and (laughs) dance around the living room and stuff being stupid you know but we listen to it all the time so i have never danced to star wars well not dance but you know (laughs) i don't know Uh, with our lightsabers i suppose ah okay (laughs) so there you have it those are those are the five that you know we're really excited to hear what they do in the future we'd love to hear who you guys think are the up-and-comers who you guys listen to some some maybe composers that don't get as much attention as say a James Newton Howard or you know Hans Zimmer someone that you feel like is going to really crush it that we didn't talk about we'd love to hear uh, some other names I know um, Hauschka you know Micah Levy she she could be on our list there's a lot I just can't think of any right now <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you guys think of something uh, let us know in the comments make sure you like and share the video with all your friends yeah and uh, tune in next week we're going to get into another fun topic here on the podcast and thanks for watching the blind mole